Hi everyone, it's just before Christmas and it's Friday today and I thought I will do uh, an illustration before I take a little break to spend time with my family and I will be doing probably videos um, here and there if I have a bit of um, spare time. So today I want to draw a mistletoe illustration and I like drawing flowers and plants as you know so I want to do this year with a little bit of my own style so I pulled out a an image of mistletoe on Google and I have it in front of me just to kind of remind myself of the structure and of the shape of mistletoe and that is all that I need for that so I think I'll start with the main branch right here. In case you're wondering what pen I'm using, this is the one that I have been using for a while and I absolutely love it. It's the Platinum Carboning um, uh, Fountain Pen in Extra Fine. And it is lovely for watercolors. So I think I will do the petals here. Did you actually know that uh, mistletoe grows on trees? It's it's a plant that basically somehow I actually need to read about it because I'm really intrigued. But I have noticed since we live in the countryside, I have noticed this a lot more. They're these sort of like bushy, once um, the, the trees lose their leaves, um, you can see these sort of bushy um, kind of bowls hanging on the crowns of the, um, in sort of in the middle of the tree crown. And that is basically mistletoe. It grows in a kind of like a bowl and it attaches itself somehow to the tree and it then gets all the nutrients and the moisture that it needs. Um, it's amazing. I thought it's just a separate uh, plant of some sort, but apparently not. So that's interesting. So mistletoe has these white kind of greenish berries. So I'm going to... When I'm looking at this image right now, I'm not copying um, any of the looks of it at all I just look at a berry and um, how it kind of is attached and I also look at the shape of the leaves and that is it um, so I think I'll do another branch just coming off here like so And I will, I just want to create a little bit more of an interest. And cross these over like so. And some of them just have one of these leaves and I will leave it like that. So these are inter, inter intertwined, I think that's the word. And let's see, just for balance, I'm going to add these berries on this side as well. Maybe two like that. And I think I'll have one here on its own so I have three areas of berries I I think that visually uh, the number three works really well so I'm going to leave it at that you can um, go as intricate as you want you can make it as bushy as you want but I think this is perfect so I'm going to now decide which watercolors I'm going to use for this and I will leave it at that just for the moment and I think after I'm finished, I might go in with the fountain pen just for some detailing, but I will see. 
um, how I feel about it after I have done the watercolors. So I'm going to grab a few colors and for that I'm going to pull out the mixing um, chart that I have made. So it's this one here and that will help me to understand what kind of colors I want and it's it's really quick so I quite like the green gold and the cobalt teal it made some beautiful greens so I think I'll predominantly use those two and possibly with some quinacridone gold and mix those three colors so essentially these three colors Jackson's Art Quill Brush, the 10 0. And I will go brighter than the natural colors. So, this isn't a botanical uh, piece. Um, this is going to be more of a fun illustration with my own take. just going to neutralize it really quickly with a little bit of the quinacridone gold okay so I'm happy with this color now I'm going to go in and this brush I need to grab a tissue because this brush does have a lot of um, moisture in there so I'm just going to start doing the watercolour. Let me know in the comments if you have um, for the you know if you have great plans to use something new for the new years like is there a watercolour that you uh, really want to try or that you um, saw some videos of other youtubers use and you thought that looks like a great color um because you know i find that we all are inspiring each other and that's great if you've seen my latest videos i have given an attempt for the sennelier and i had mixed feelings about it um but i do intend to use that watercolor in the new year um the way that Billy Shovel recommends in her book just because I want to learn how she's doing that okay so I might zoom in so you can actually see what's happening right here look at this petal right here can you see the beautiful separation of the palette here the colors separate gorgeously so you have to mix them up every time you want to use it just to refresh it so I am going to now go into this color a little bit here just like so it's a very green color so it might be a bit too much so I don't want to have too much of a color clash but I really like those watercolor paintings where the colors are. okay so the card got full again so I'm not sure at which point it stopped so I'm going to also carry on with this color on this side because of the beautiful color separation when mixing these two colors they create such a wonderful um, interesting look without you even needing to try so I think fantastic and high quality watercolor that makes you want to create and I think that says a lot about um, a watercolor so I'm trying to mix um, another green and I hope you can see it hopefully right here um, and this time I want to create more of, of a like a forest green so I've got these two colors the quinacridone crimson and permanent alizarin crimson so this is the warmer out of the two the quinacridone crimson and I'm going to squeeze out a touch of it just because I want to um, add some of this 
kind of like a red color um, for the forest green so let's see I will need only a tiny little bit okay so this is right color now so then I'm going to go into here Oop, sorry about that. And I'm going to put this color into here as well, like so. I'm leaving white areas as a highlight. And I think I really like this color, so I'm going to also use it for the stalks. So I'm going to go in and do the stalks. Now again, because of the color separation with stalks, quite often I experience uh, an element of flatness, which is because you don't have a large area to work with. It's only a, a line, usually a thin line that you need to fill the color in and then for you to then start an adding dimension you have to work on a very um, precise level with core watercolors um, it's a lot easier because you don't even need to worry about that the separation will eat uh, will add this um, kind of a dimension and interest to it without you needing to go back into it if that makes sense because you can see here already I just mixed up the colors and I laid them on paper I didn't need to do anything else and it just done that by itself so that's the great thing about it it's already started doing it here you can see a variation of colors there's no other watercolor that would um, do it in at such a level I know Daniel Smith um, kind of does it as well depending on what um, color you go for moon glow uh, is a fantastic or violet shadow um, the two colors are best known for that beautiful um, separation but other than that um, not all of them do that but with the core I have experienced that a lot so in this corner I'm mixing up a very pale green which I'm going to use for these berries. Um, they are really white but they do have a slight hint of pale green to them and I'm just using that as a shadow so these berries are not going to be colored in completely. So I will let the watercolors dry and then mix up a slightly darker color just to intensify the green and then go over them. Okay, so those um, petals that are dry, which is this one, this one, this one, and this one, I'm going to go in uh, with the next um, layer of color, which I typically don't do, but I do want to create um, a bit more dimension than it is right now, as I find they're all kind of are um, the same and I want some of those to pop and come out a little bit more so over here I have mixed three colors I have mixed the um, Queen Nacredon Crimson with the green gold and cobalt teal and I'm going to go into some of these areas and just put this color not everywhere but in some of the areas of the petal I think I might actually just kind of Take this color up a little bit more and just 
create these light brush strokes like so just to fill in a little bit more but leave it quite organic and natural you can see the glazing here so you can see the color underneath comes through quite beautifully and I am going to do that in some of the others as well so that should be enough and then this one needs it as well just because with watercolor when you um, paint with it as you go you realize where you need to add things which is fun as it's quite unpredictable and then the final one we're going to go into here which is just about enough watercolor I have left for that okay so I quite like this now as you can see when I'm looking at the stalks they look quite um, how shall I say I don't have the color breakdown but they do need a little bit more and what I'm going to do just with what I have left in my brush which is still a little bit of color I'm going to touch just on one side I'm not filling in the whole thing and in terms of these berries I'm just going to touch what I have left in my brush just on the very 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 outer corner of the berry that gives it a great dimension as long as you don't put too much of it so that's the great part about this brush is the fact that you um, have so much pigment left in here okay so this is my mistletoe um, I hope you enjoy this illustration and um, once again Merry Christmas and see you at some point during the Christmas I guess <laughs> thanks for watching see you soon